I think now that we've gone over the Forerunners at their zenith, I think now's a good time to look at who the single greatest Forerunner of all time is, and without a doubt, that's the Librarian. I'd even go as far as to say that the Librarian is the closest thing to a main character that Halo has had since Halo 4. Everything that has happened in the Milky Way galaxy over the last 100,000 years is solely because of her. Now, the Covenant, uh, that's kind of its own thing, but this woman controlled how humanity evolved, how their technology would progress, all of it, 100,000 years in advance. Now, before I get into why I think she's the best character and you know, fangirl about how much of a girl boss this lady is, I think I have to start with some lore. The librarian is essentially the head life worker, uh, just think of like the doctors or the biologists of the Forerunner Society, and that's just the smallest accomplishment on her plate. This woman, or Forerunner, sorry, made it to another galaxy entirely. She is the one that went to Path Cathona, and this voyage was the quote-unquote largest expedition in recent Forerunner history. And as if that's not enough, she had the balls to just straight up poke a 10 million year old Forerunner Armada like it was no big deal. Then goes down to a primitive planet and lets a caveman take a chunk out of her arm. Granted, with how advanced Forerunner technology is and whatnot, this wound wouldn't have been serious. She still let the equivalent of a caveman bite her just so that way they could make sure they were the same species. Then, as if that isn't cool enough, just because this person bit her, and you know, they, they mingled their saliva or whatever, their DNAs crossed, the helixes combined, apparently she can speak that language now, like it's just a normal Tuesday. Not only that, she is the only forerunner with a sense of humor. Well, after she gets bit, she goes back to the ship, you know, she goes through her diagnostic process, oh yeah, we're the same species, whatnot, comes back and asks the same woman who bit her, hey, you wanna bite my other arm? And I know that humor might be such an integral part to human society, but this is the Forerunners. They don't have humor. They don't smile. They don't laugh. They're very serious. They're very duty-bound, even if that duty is just wrong. I think one of the things that really holds the Librarian back is the fact that she's married to the Didact, two completely opposite ends of the spectrum, and if you've read the Forerunner trilogy of books, you know how everyone else comments on this. In Forerunner society, to... Uh, I guess experience something outside of your rate is really uncommon, and the fact that her husband was so the ultimate destroyer of life while she is the ultimate preserver of life is a really beautiful duality. Also, I don't know how to fit this in there. Uh, this woman had at least three husbands, and she told the other ones about each other like it was no big deal. Granted, the Forerunners don't view sex the same way we do. That's, that's, still, that's still pretty badass. But moving back to her accomplishments, I think the single largest of her accomplishments is what is sometimes referred to as a gayish, or think of like an engramic implant of a memory like a genetic memory, like you are born and you innately have all of your ancestors memories, like your grandma's pot pie recipe, yeah, that's baked in. These Gaius are so strong that they are physically able to overpower the main consciousness of the individual. To give you an exact context, in the very beginning of the Forerunner trilogy book, uh, Cryptum, which is the first in the series, the two humans, Riser and Chakas, are leading Born Stellar to this thing. Uh, they're not entirely sure what it is, but at multiple different points throughout it, their Gaish shines through, and for some reason they start singing, or something along the sorts. Something that they have no recollection of. Born Stellar asks them why they were singing, and they don't recall singing at all. Keep in mind these Gaishes are going to be very, very important down the line, but for right now, just keep in mind this is before the firing of the Halo Rings. This is before she reseeded life in essentially the entire galaxy. As the Halo Rings are firing, she is essentially the only Forerunner within the Milky Way galaxy that has any recollection or information on the Precursor Forerunner War that happened 10 million years ago. And while most characters would get really, really depressed when they find out that their gods turn their back on them, the librarian uses this as an opportunity to repent or go on like uh, the halo equivalent of a penitent crusade, minus the killing, because she makes life, not destroys it. That's her husband. 
When humans are reseeded the second time after the Halo Rings were fired, the Halo Rings were only fired once humans have been reseeded on Earth twice. The first time life was reseeded on Earth, she planted in them the memories of ancient scientists and ancient generals so that way humans would be able to rebuild or get back to the precipice that they were once at. The second time after the firing, it was so much more elaborate. She actually planned for John 117, John Spartan, John Halo, whatever the hell you want to call him, planned for his birth, his rise, and him discovering the Forerunner Shield world of Requiem a hundred thousand years in advance. She had a hologram made of herself. You know that movie trope of the old dude who dies and he somehow has a will that explains everything and he's able to talk to the person? Yeah, the librarian did that a hundred thousand years ago. Because in Halo 4, it's revealed that Every single part of humanity's development over the last 100,000 years has been planned for. She planned for the Spartan 2 project. She planned for John 117 to be where he was, when he was, with the musculature that he had. And maybe she's responsible for his luck. Also, now's a good time to mention, she physically implanted her husband within Chief. So, technically she has a fourth husband, but that's a hologram, so I'll give her the benefit of a doubt. I think the fact that the Forerunners, while having some of the absolute worst characters in the setting, like the Didact, Fertenko, the uh, Master Builder. Wait, is Fertenko the Master Builder? No, Faber's the Master Builder. Sorry. You have both of those terrible characters alive at the same time as the single greatest Forerunner. The Librarian could have just laid down after the firing of the rings and accepted her fate, but she decided to go so far above and beyond to fix the mistakes of her forebearers that it's so admirable, it's so beautiful that in the yin there is the yang. Granted, it's one dot of light in the darkness, it's still nice to see that there is the dot. I know that we've probably seen all that there is to see of the Librarian in Halo, but it's so depressing that Halo 4 and Halo 5 built up this great, great story that really could have gone with the UNSC you know, discovering the truth of the Precursors, discovering the Precursor homeworlds, but instead we get a new faction that just came out of nowhere. Granted, the created aren't terrible, and we do get some really cool lore from them, it's not what could have been. Think of what could have been if humanity had gone to Path Cathona, discovered the ancient Forerunner fleet, discovered exactly what happens between the Forerunners and the Precursors, discovered their technology from their zenith. So many things could have happened, and they just forgot about them. I don't know, that's enough rambling for this video. I just wanted to talk about the single greatest girl boss to ever exist in any form of media ever. Bye.